going on guys? It is your boy Assistor here, bringing us a Photoshop tutorial here today. Bring you guys a simplistic banner design tutorial here today. I know you guys love this series. I, it's, I, I can see why, right? It's just making the most out of a really nice clean design with not like little effort, but just more little detail and just like these simple kind of things that anyone can do. So I can tell you like that's probably why the, you know, the series itself is successful. So I wanna, you know, I appreciate it very, very much that you're making this such an easy job for me. It's like really fun to do these little simplistic videos and to always have a lot of love from these things. I really do appreciate it. So with that being said, this little style I have going on here today is basically I, I've seen this little thing around. I have like a little circle in the middle and all of a sudden everything just looks pretty, right? I don't know what it is, so I took my own take on it. And basically we have a circle in the middle um, with a nice picture, by the way. I think the, uh, the picture's like description was like New Zealand mountains or something like that. If you want to get the same picture as me. But what I did, I just Googled uh, mountains in Google and I went to the side, changed it to 4 megapixels to get a nice little HD picture and threw it in Photoshop. That's what I got. So if you guys want to get the same picture, most likely the same exact thing will show up if you type in mountains. Anyway, uh, the CC in here is really, really, really nice. I really like have a successful look of colors and just it looks really, really pretty, you know? Like, I don't know. That's how I feel when I look at simplistic videos from my own. Uh, they just look good, right? It's so easy to do. So basically, we're going to teach you all that cool stuff today. And pretty much all you got to know is or we're going to have to like have is a picture and then you're good to go. So. Um, don't forget guys, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below. Um, most likely be the PSD of right here as you see this right here right now. Most likely be the PSD of this, that way you can, you know, like, I guess dissect it and like create something on your own if you guys really wish to, or, you know, I guess learn on your own is another way. Um, so yeah, with that being said, the first thing we're going to be starting to do is the circle in the middle, right? The main thing where I think it just makes this cool, like, looking thing. So let's go for that. So to do this, we're going to make a new layer right here or control shift N press OK and make a new layer as well if you wish to. Um, but the rectangle marquee tool the little thing right here, just change it to the elliptical marquee tool. And pretty much if you were on Windows alt and shift, I don't know what it is on Mac because I, like, I see a lot of comments saying like, yo, what is it for Mac? Like, I don't know, bro. I don't use that anyway. But if you're holding alt and shift and you click and drag, you can see that the circle itself is going to be like showing up, you know, relatively in the middle on um, this because I click relatively in the middle. But you can see that looks pretty good because I can see what the size is, like kind of what I'm working with. Besides just holding shift, right, where you just like do that. You can do either one, right? Alt and shift or just, uh, alt and shift or just shift. So I'm using alt and shift for this. Just click in the middle a little bit and just kind of see what kind of size I want to work with. So I think that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So pretty much I'm going to fill this in with uh, alt backspace. It doesn't really matter what color. This is just like your sample. It's just kind of like a sample circle. Um, you'll never see the circle again, basically. Uh, so yeah, my rulers, put this in the middle, uh, there we go. So pretty much with this circle sample little thing here, like technically you really don't have to fill it in, but it just, it just works out just in case you got to restart. But if you're holding control and you select the thumbnail, it actually selects the circle, uh, circle for you guys again. And pretty much with that, I can just uncheck that, unhide that. Uh, like I said, I don't really need that anymore. But when I click on the background and I have the marquee tool selected, it will give me the option when I right click to layer via copy. You don't want to cut. If you cut, you can see this outline around here. And of course, now you're going to see the black background that I have in the back of the background itself. We want to make sure the background stays clean, crisp, no little cuts in there. So on the background, right click uh, with the rectangle marquee tool and layer via copy, just like so. And now basically you can't really tell, but if I got rid of that, there's a circle of the circle that we had in here. So with that, you know, done or whatever, you can see in my example that the circle is actually upside down. So I don't know what I've seen it. It just looks good. It just, you know, it just works, right? So control T, right click either uh, horizontal, flip horizontal and or vertical. We'll just do vertical and horizontal. Why not? Right. And now you just have this really offset, like kind of like work, like design you're working with. So now it's just like, now you have like free form to like do whatever the heck you guys want. So I'm using rules for this just so I know where my four cardinals are. Um, like they match up here, but like I said in the beginning, uh, this is like messed up, but whatever. We won't have that happen for the example of the uh, tutorial itself. But we have the four quadrants here. So if I just put my rectangle marquee tool back, uh, not the circle one, but you can see here, it's pretty easy to like, you know, take the rectangle and put it in different spots. So with that being said, if you don't know how to use your uh, your um, your own uh, rulers, excuse me, I'm like completely lost for a second. Control R is how you bring them up. And so pretty much you just want to take, you want to click on here, take it, drag it, right? And then if you're somewhere in the middle of the canvas, like if your mind says like, you know, this is the middle, you'll feel that little snap. You can see it's already snapping, but it's snapping like one little inch off of like, you know, my actual centered uh, ruler. But that's how you do it. You snap it there, take the top one and you snap it down here. That way you have this in your little quadrant thing, right? So you have these little quadrants now. Um, this is a uh, Twitter header uh, size, by the way, the Twitter header size for me 
that I'm using is 500, uh, 1500 by 500 pixels, 200 resolution I'm using. So if you want to use the same one, you could. Um, like this is the tw uh, the YouTube one, by the way. But I also do put this in a, a template itself, just so I can actually upload it. Uh, this one's right here, just in case you want these dimensions. I don't know, you guys always ask, so I'm gonna make sure I put them in. So, for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just take this background here. I'm using the rectangle marquee tool. I'm gonna select this quadrant over here, right? The top right, just with the re re rectangle marquee tool. And pretty much, I'm gonna right click, layer via copy again. And this is this little fun stuff you can do. So I'm gonna hold Control T, or just press Control T. And I'm gonna right click and flip it vertical. And there we go, now you have an upside down mountain. So pretty much pressing enter or clicking on the uh, little check plus up here will get rid of that for you. And pretty much now we have like another like offset kind of looking, you know, something going on that is not supposed to be going on. It's just like, that's what the fun is for this. Uh, this is top right. I'm doing it again, uh, control H to bring the, the rulers back up and you know, get rid of them as well. Uh, so I'm gonna do it for this one right here. I'm gonna right click uh, later via copy and control T. And what I'm gonna do for this one is actually just flip it horizontal I think right I mean like it's still it almost looks like it's supposed to work but if you look over here then of course you can see now there's another quadrant there so now you're starting to see basically what we have over here so simple it literally is as simple as it looks right but it looks so freaking good so this is what bottom left and then bottom right and then this is the middle circle all right, sweet. So pretty much what I have now going on is pretty good start. Um, so right now I'm actually gonna I'll make a duplicate of this background really quickly. So Control J to make a duplicate of it, or right click on the layer itself, and pretty much where is duplicate layer right there. So there you go. You do that as well. I'm gonna call this the blur layer because that's what I'm gonna do to it. I'm gonna go ahead and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna blur it by eh, three pixels, 3.5 pixels. That's pretty good. I'm just gonna put it on three pixels for you guys. Press OK. And then there we go. Now we got like, you know, this really easily uh, shown four quadrants, right? You can see that now for sure. Um, like I, you can always, if you want to, like I have it on a new layer for a reason. Um, we're just gonna use the actual masking tool, this little masking thing right here. So if I delete anything on here, uh, I won't actually delete anything on the picture. Um, so if I just delete something over here or erase it, I'm not saying delete, like erase something over here, like over here. If I want to have like little areas where they're not blurred out, I could do that. And if I ever want to fill them back in, I can use a brush right now. Uh, let me just make this soft brush here. If I want to bring it back, I just brush it in just like so. And you can see over here, it gets rid of it. So if you see that black dot there, that's because it's not blurred right here. But if I click on it, I'll like basically paint over it again with a brush. It's no longer blurred. So if you want to do that, you could, but I like the blurry look. So with that being said, I'm gonna leave it there. So basically now is the, the color correction. And then we're gonna go to lighting, uh, light ing, light, light ink, lighting, lighting. <laughs> That's a hard word for me, I don't know why. Um, and then it's gonna look great. So pretty much the first thing I'm gonna be using is the brightness and contrast. Uh, just like so. Basically what we're gonna be doing is just making the, the entire thing look good and like nice and vibrant. Um, also actually, it's, it sounds weird, but also using vibrance and lowering it down. But with the brightness and contrast there, it's also gonna still show that really rich and awesome color. Um, so uh, basically I'm gonna change this to about uh, 25. I'm actually gonna put them both to 25. So 25, 25, and right away we got this really nice color look. It's a color change, looks really, really nice. Um, <clears throat> now, of course, if you're using the same exact picture as me, the color correction's gonna look fine. But if you're not, if you're using more of like a green or, I don't know, if you're using some kind of picture that has a lot of brown or something, I don't know, maybe this brightness and contrast wouldn't work. But regardless, make sure you kind of keep the brightness up and the contrast above. Don't go negative on this one, um, just because you're gonna be doing curves and stuff like that, that'll kind of like, you know, correspond to what we're gonna be doing for like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just don't don't make sure you just copy it just because I have the same exact, um, just because you're looking at the tutorial. You know, not every CC works for every single picture. Anyway, we're gonna go to curves now. And pretty much for the curves, I don't have to do nothing crazy, but just basically like, you know, a little bit of like a, um, yeah, right there, pretty good. Uh, basically like a nice little slanted S. Like as always, I wish I to go for the slanted little S little thing. So I wish I put that in there, so for the curves. And pretty much now is the vibrance. And this is what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna change my vibrance to about negative 45. And we're gonna change our saturation to 25. And there we go. Now we get this really like cool looking rich color that looks like, it just looks pretty. I don't know <laughs> what else to use. It just looks good. So um, right now I can probably use photo filter if I wanted to. Uh, let's just see, photo filter is right here. Um, if I want to, like you can see what it looks like if you put like really up there. You get this really nice vintage color look. If you leave it on orange, um, you can use it on any other thing as you wish to but I'm just gonna leave it on orange for now because that's, it's just working for me right now. But if I want to, the density can be at like what, 50 or something like that, 55. And you get this really nice, um, like I said, like a really nice vintage look to it. If you're not looking for it, 
I don't know, you can keep it on there if you wish to. I'm just gonna lower mine to 15%, just to give me like a little bit of different color. You can see that there if I turn it on and off. And pretty much, uh, last but not least, will be exposure. So for this, I'm gonna change my offset to 0 0.020, 0. boom. And then, up. Oh, did it work? Yeah, it did, all right. And then for the gamma correction, I'm just gonna put this at 0 0.80. Boom, and there we go. So the another thing with exposure is, of course, every picture is not going to look the same. But maybe if you have like the same colors, like you know, blues, greens, or whatever, you can get this look to it, right? And it looks good for me. It just like flattens the image a little bit and kind of like has this really nice natural flow going through. Besides, kind of like I don't know, it's just one of those things I do with exposure. I like it. It looks good in my opinion. So pretty much, we're almost done. Um, simple lighting things that I do uh, that I always try to go for is like to finish this whole thing off. Is of course make a new layer. And use a brush, right? Soft brush is fine, just like so right here. And a control alt to make this a little bit bigger. Control alt, right click is to make it bigger. So right click, uh, when you're right clicking, you have to move it left or and right. You can make the diameter bigger and smaller. And up and down is your hardness. So pretty much that's a little shortcut if you want to. But make sure your foreground color right here is white. And pretty much make a nice little good size, decent uh, soft brush. And click one nice time on the top. Uh, I would say relatively just enough to like give this really nice little lighting effect right up there. It looks really really good. Um, for me, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna put in here. What do I want to put in here? Uh, what I have like, what did I have? I had like geometric. Um, what I want to put this time? Subscribe. Yeah, that's what we'll do. And the font that I'm using is Nexa Light. And pretty much to get this little effect that I have with this right here. Um, what I did was like the little you can see the little text effect right here What I did was really simple stuff. I right-clicked or not right click change my layer mode from normal to overlay and uh, Make sure this is black by the way the uh, color of the text is black There we go And I got that overlay looking right there and I'm gonna make a duplicate of this text So control J on my keyboard and pretty much I'm gonna rasterize it <clears throat> Probably don't really need to but I'm not sure if I do or not But if I'm gonna uh, rasterize it, I'm gonna go to motion blur and I'm just gonna change my distance to about 85 or so and then pretty much, I'm going to press OK. I'm going to move it to the left just a little bit, not too far out. And I believe if I change this to white really quick, make that white, and then put this on overlay. Rasterize the layer, put it on overlay. We can get this little effect that kind of looks like it's streaming through or like, you know, kind of flowing through. And that's the kind of effect I used on the other one. So it looks really good to me. I, I do like how it looks a lot. So that's what I did for that. And pretty much for any other lighting effects, uh, the cool thing that I did was... And this is the light on top. Uh, the cool thing I did was I made a new layer and pretty much I use this one of the colors from here. I use like a blue from here, right? Uh, this will work, you know, one of these like kind of like, like this like blue right here, right? So pretty much I'm going to click around like maybe like here, 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 and like here. And then what I did for some reason, I put it on divine. So I know divine is going to make it orangey or like basically the opposite color of, you know, like, you know, kind of like works, you know, you see this here, it's, it started off blue. I put it on divine, it looks orange. And for me, it looks cool with like a different color, but if I press control U, right, and I just change my hue, uh, you can see that the uh, color itself, you know, you can, you can change through and see which kind of ones you like. Uh, the purple one looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna use the blue. Put the lightness up maybe a little bit. Uh, that looks pretty good. So if I uncheck and check it, you can see it's just extra lighting effects that go around. You can do whatever the heck you guys want. What I did for the small circle, which is the middle circle right here, I put a little pattern pack in it. Uh, I put a little pattern in it, which you can use my pattern pack for it. Uh, the 5K, uh, 50K pattern pack, you know, whatever. This is the only the things that came in the 50K uh, pattern pack. It looks cool. The circles look cool to me, so I'm just going to put them on overlay and then just lower the opacity a little bit. And then for the little particles, what I did was I just made a new layer. And this is the what? This is just more lights. What I did was I made a new layer. And pretty much, I'm gonna use uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, I think from here to here, by the way, is like the other the 50k brush pack. Like from here all the way through to here is a 50k brush pack. These are mine. But basically, if you get a brush that looks something like you know, looks something like maybe this. No, would that work? That would kind of work. Maybe this will work. Um, this is from my 50k brush pack. I try to get one from uh, so that you guys can use. Um, so yeah, what you can do is pretty much make a new layer, right? This is gonna be we're gonna be call this the uh, particles, and I'll just drag this down below. Uh, throw it down below until the blur bar, right? Until here, and we're gonna do it that way that so it's only like it's only gonna be here and here, not on top of these two. 
uh, these two right here. It's going to be here and here. So pretty much when I press the brush right, I'm going to click right there. Uh, put it above that. There we go. Click right there and click right there. So pretty much if I change this from normal to dissolve, we get these cool little particles. If I just lower the opacity down, the more you lower it down, the more little, uh, I guess, like dissolves it gets, which actually looks like particles to me. So if I just lower it down to maybe about 16% uh, looks pretty good. You can see it just looks really nice. I, I like the looks of like particles or whatever. And if you want to, you can make another new layer and just pull, doo -doo -doo, make another layer, put it above everything, like the circle itself, maybe even, no, below, below the circle at least. And I'm going to put this like, we're going to call this like uh, particles two or something. <laughs> Particles to right use a brush put it on here and here, but it's uh, make it less I believe than what we had before So what we have on here the uh, other particles is 16% I'm gonna change this one to like uh, maybe like five that we get just like a few that kind of like you know kind of like linger around this one in here, so That's pretty much it for the video here today Um, You can do whatever the heck you guys want from this point like you can do like literally whatever um, Even like drop. I'm just seeing what this looks like uh, Do I like how this looks? No, not really. I'm not the biggest fan. But, I mean, like, if you like something like that, I don't really know. I don't really like that, to be honest. But I'm trying it out. So you can try everything. You try whatever the heck you guys want um, from this point on. But this is basically the whole entire, like, clean look comes to it. It looks really freaking good. And don't be afraid either to, like, maybe, um, uh, let's just say you want the black and white kind of on, like, the maybe the blur, the background itself. And I just go to, like, you know, uh, gradient map and just change it to black and white. Right, you get this like cool black and white theme going on. If you want to put a little black and white in it, or if you want to lower the opacity down a little bit to make it just a little bit more, uh, maybe like less color, so like less saturated than this right here. If you want to do something like that, if that looks good to you. So things like that, you can go ahead and try out yourself. Enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoy this video here today. I do hope you guys have an amazing, amazing, dope Friday weekend, all that cool stuff. I appreciate you guys so freaking much. Thank you guys for 52K subscribers. If I hadn't said that already in my last video, I think I hit it like this week, something like that. So probably didn't. So thank you guys so much. We're growing super fast. I appreciate it so freaking much. You don't understand. So don't forget to check out my Selfie, selfie.com slash SOHQ for any premiums and packs of those five bucks. Also, you can buy the uh, everything pack, which is one price of $30 and basically get everything in my store and anything that comes out in my store for free through email. So it's a really dope purchase. Um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at SwitchQ. Please tweet me anything that you guys do for my tutorials, inspiration wise. I will probably most likely retweet them if they're really nice and cool and you follow the directions pretty well. And if you're just looking for any help, um, please tweet me. Don't be afraid to. Thank you guys so freaking much. Talk to you guys later. Let's switch you out. Peace.